Hey guys, so I figured I would do the childhood tag. Um, I'm pretty sure they're just kind of like nonchalant questions, but I don't really know because I only saw one question. So there is 10 questions. Figured you guys could get to know my past a little bit. Um, not the serious stuff because I've shared some things and you guys know I've been through the ringer and back 15 different times. So these are some lighthearted questions. So if you want to get to know the childhood Amberlynn Reed a little bit more, let's get into this. So the first question is, what was your favorite vacation you went on as a child? So a lot of these questions are kind of like, for a normal average person, it's just like, you can think of these things and be happy, but I feel like a lot of this is gonna have um, some sadness behind it because nothing was what it seemed when I was younger, but I feel like that's a whole other ball game, but just really quick backstory. Um, my parents did drugs. I was in foster care. You know, I did live with my parents until I was eight, nine. And um, it's just, it's a lot. I've been through a lot while living with them. But while living with my parents, we would go camping and we would go every summer for my brother's birthday because my brother's birthday is June 21st. And to me, yes, there is some negatives in all of these situations. I feel like uh, this is why it's hard talking about my childhood because um, it wasn't the greatest, but that's okay. Anyways. Camping was fun to me because it was a different place to be. Um, my dad, he would go fishing and he knew how to like gut a fish. We would catch crawdads together. I love doing that. Um, the place we would go camping had a little like beach moment. So we'd like swim in the water and you know, me and my brother would bring bikes and we would ride our bikes around. I remember just thinking it was so cool because my dad would put us in the back of the truck and we'd be able to lay in the back of the truck while we went through like windy roads and like in the camp area. It was a big popular camp place. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, second question, who was your first celebrity crush? Jeez, um, I feel like I had a few. Aaron Carter, Hilary Duff, I honestly, I'm going to say for, for male, it would be Aaron Carter or Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Female would be Hilary Duff or probably like, um, I really loved Manny Moore as well. What did you want to be when you grew up? I was that typical, I want to be a singer. I want to be a model. I want to be an actress. That was like in my wildest dreams. But as I got a little bit older, around 12, I really wanted to be a teacher. That's what my mind was set on for years, actually, until I was about 15. And then that's when I actually wanted to be a corrections officer and I wanted to work in a prison. I know that's like so weird. And I did a lot of research actually um, during career day in high school. I know childhood isn't really high school, but... Um, during career day in high school, a corrections officer was actually there and I was shocked. I can't even tell you how many questions I asked and how intrigued I was. For some reason, working in a prison was just like, I don't know, it was so enticing to me for some reason. But um, but as a child, it was either like singer, model, da da da, or it was a teacher. Um, what was your favorite school subject? My favorite subject in school, so I'm trying to think childhood, not high school, not middle school. I'm trying to think of elementary school. I really enjoyed writing. I feel like it's always been English. It's always like anything to do with writing. I really loved math too. Um, I don't know, things like that, I guess. How did you find out Santa slash the Easter Bunny slash the Tooth Fairy wasn't real? So regarding Easter Bunny and Tooth Fairy, it was kind of just, I don't remember like a distinctive moment. It was kind of just like, oh, okay, they're not real. I guess I coincided that with Santa Claus not being real and how I found that out was, I think it was the last 
Christmas I actually had with my family before I got put into foster care, um, my mom was actually pregnant with my brother Jonathan, who is now in closed adoption. Um, again, that's a whole other subject. But my mom was pregnant with Jonathan, and I remember every single Christmas I would sleep on the couch because I wanted to meet Santa. I wanted to see Santa put the gifts under the tree because my nanny, which was my aunt, I called her nanny, that was just like a thing. My nanny would always tell me that every single Christmas Santa would kiss me on the forehead. Um, so I wanted to meet Santa and I knew I was going to that Christmas and little did I know I was right. So I'm just sleeping on the couch, you know, living my best life. And all of a sudden I hear this loud noise from my mom and she was standing there and I don't think she knew I was awake. And she goes, oh my gosh, my water broke while I was putting out the kids Santa gifts. And I said, what? So that's how I found out that Santa wasn't real. And um, my mom had Jonathan that Christmas and um, I miss him so much and I just wonder how he's doing, where he's at, who he is as a person. And same with my brother James, because they were both put into closed adoption. And I just miss them dearly. And, you know, I always have that Christmas story now to look back on. And it's a beautiful story, honestly. And, um, yeah, I just wish I knew them. Um, who was your best friend and how did you meet Oh boy, I feel like I had quite a few best friends in my younger years, childhood, but for some reason, the one that I am thinking about the most, I don't want to say any names though, I'm just going to say their name starts with a K. I'm going to call, actually I'm going to call her K. Um, so I lived in a trailer park and... She actually moved in with like a neighbor. It was like two trailers down or one. No, it was two trailers down. Okay. And she was my age. And I don't remember if we like walked past each other. I don't know how it happened. But all of a sudden me and her became inseparable. I am talking glued to the hip. And we would actually make up like dances to Britney Spears' songs and we would perform them in front of our mothers. That was really funny. We would have constant sleepovers. Like we were obsessed with each other, like literally obsessed with each other. Um, we would get in trouble together. We, we would just do everything. And now that I think back of it, I think like I had a crush on her, but it's a whole other subject. Um, <laughs> but we would, I don't know if I said we would have sleepovers. I don't know, we were just always together. And then I got taken from my parents. And I remember getting a call when I was at the children's shelter. Um, it was actually, I think my grandma was the one who called, I'm pretty sure, because we were allowed to have one phone call a day. It was very rare that I got phone calls. Who knows why, it doesn't even matter at this point. But my grandma called and she said that Kay had moved away to Tennessee. As a nine-year-old, my, like, I felt like my soul left my body. I cried so hard and I cried for weeks because as a nine-year-old, Tennessee is a whole different, like, planet, you know? And in my heart, I was like, I'm never going to see her again. Like, it honestly broke me. I think that was the first time I've ever been, like, broken hearted over a person besides like the you know my family issues and stuff and the things I went through regarding that but I think that was my first like broken heart um like as a as as a person from from a friend or whatever and um so fast forward when I was 16 I well no I think I was 15 yeah I was 15 and I got to do like this trial thing, live with my parents to see if they were 
suitable to be parents to see if, you know, I could get out of foster care, blah, blah, blah. So during that time, I actually went to the fair in my hometown, which is Petaluma, California. And Kay had a sister. I'm going to say her name is S. Okay. So Kay had a sister named S. And I remember always looking up to Kay's sister. This is like a complete story time. I'm sure no one cares. But um, I always looked up to S. And I also think I had a crush on her. Um, I want to say she was about five years older than us. You guys, I've liked girls from the get up. That's just how it goes. Um, so... I always looked up to her and I was like, oh my God, I want to be just like her when I grow up. Like, these are just thoughts that I always had. You guys know, like when you're younger, you always had that person like you looked up to. And I think for me, it was definitely Kay's sister was one of them. So I remember I was 15. I was at the fair and I remember I was on, I don't know if you guys know that ride. It's like shaped as a spaceship and it goes like really fast. And then like gravity makes it to where you're like stuck in you literally can't move. I was on that ride and I looked across the ride before it even started and I saw someone that looked so familiar. It was like, who is this person? And I put two and two together and it was S. And I was like, oh my God. So I had all, like I was scared. I had all these like emotions running through me and I was like, okay, if there's S, that means K's here. And I was like so excited. I was like, Kay is just going to be so thrilled to see me. So I mustered up the nerves. I went up to S and I was like, oh my God, hey. And she acted like she didn't even know who I was. So I had to explain it to her. I was like, remember me and Kay were like best friends, glued to the hip. And she was like, oh, okay. And I was like, is she here? And she was like, yeah, she's over by the concert area. Smash Mouth was actually playing. I'm pretty sure Smash, Smash Mouth was playing that year at the fair. And she was like, yeah, oh, she's over in the concert area. And I was like, oh my God, okay. So I went on the prowl to find her. I was so excited because, you know, she was my childhood best friend. I was like pumped beyond the gods. And I was like, she's going to be so excited to see me. People change, okay? People change. She saw me. I saw her. I said, hey. She said, hey. She wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> she was hanging out with these other friends. She became the popular girl is what I'm trying to say. Um, she had these gorgeous friends. She grew up to be gorgeous. And I was just, I was just there. This depressed, um, yeah, I was going through a lot when I was 15. That's actually the year that I went to a mental hospital. Whole other subject, whole other subject. Um, so me and her grew up, she was thriving and I was not, I was going through a lot. So that was very hard. Um, that was a long answer for that, but I almost wish I would have never seen her that day, you know, because now like that's my last memory of her versus the last memory I could have had of her was like the good times me and her had, you know? Um, okay. What were your favorite sports and hobbies? Okay. So I don't know if you guys know this, but as a child, I was on a soccer team. I was on a softball team. I was in a dance group. I did a lot of stuff like that. I would rollerblade, roller skate, swim, ride my bike, the whole nine yards. Like I was always outside. I was always moving. I was always having fun, but I was still a chunky child. I think I just loved food. I don't know what it was, but I was very, I don't want to say athletic, but I kind of was. Um, I just love doing things like that. So favorite sports, see soccer and softball was fun. If I had to choose between the two, I think definitely soccer. I preferred playing soccer. Next question. How would you describe yourself as a kid? Nerdy, jock, bully, etc. Oh, um, so as a child, again, I'm thinking of like elementary like days. Oh yeah, and by the way, when it comes to hobbies, I love playing tetherball and jump roping at school. Those also count. Tetherball, jump roping were my jams. I was amazing at them. Ugh. I almost want to buy a tetherball thing and put it in our backyard or something. That sounds so fun. 
and nostalgic. Um, but describing myself as a kid, uh, I want to say loser. <laughs> I was like a loser. I don't know. Number nine, who was your role model? Probably Kay. Um, I loved Mandy Moore, Hilary Duff. I also loved Mary Kate and Ashley. Um, and as a young child, you think that your mom hung the moon. Um, as a little girl, I just thought she was the most beautiful, amazing creature God ever could have created. And I feel like that's just how little kids are. Like, I remember my brother, he was like four. He literally asked our mom to marry him. Little kids just have like that mom, like love. I don't know. Um, last question. What advice would you give to your eight year old self? I would say you're gonna go through a lot. You're gonna go through more than you feel like you can handle, but you're gonna handle it because you're strong. You are very strong and you are the strongest person that you know. And that is one thing that you can take to your grave. But the advice that I give you is to love yourself enough to take care of yourself. Don't be afraid to put yourself first in a healthy manner. Eat right, exercise, respect people around you. Don't make horrible decisions, but have fun and love often. That is what I would say to my eight-year-old self. And I almost wish it was possible to do that, but it's not possible. That's not reality. Because I feel like I would grow up to be, to be different, you know? Anyways, that was actually a fun childhood tag. I am really glad it wasn't any serious questions or super serious. Yeah, like none of these were like super serious because I have makeup all over my face from crying if that was the case. So I'm glad that's not the case. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed getting to know a little bit more of my childhood in that type of sense. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.